good? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Okay, so what is everybody doing with all that fat they have? Because I, I have a lot of hogs, and let me tell you, sometimes I got a freezer that looks like it's only fat. Then we'll do a cow and some goats and some sheep, and before you know it, um, we are running a fat factory. So we render a lot. That's what you're looking at here is we get lots of jars of, this is all pork lard. No, this is not, this, I'm sorry, is lamb. We're doing sheep tallow today. Um, so we did a couple big fat girls a while ago in, let me tell you, they were lard buckets. Um, they were old girls and it wasn't working for them. So we processed them and enjoyed every bit of them and they gave us a lifetime supply of this. Well, I have too much, what are we gonna do with it? I've done everything. We sell the tallow. We use the tallow and body butters. We eat the tallow and cook with it. Well, we're gonna make soap with it. So there's something very spectacular about lamb tallow and tallows in general when you're making a soap because of the creaminess, the moisturizing. No, you're not loaded in bubbles. And no, you're not gonna possibly be cleansing. But how dirty do you think you really are? Because chances are you're probably not dirty. You need more moisturizing than anything. So natural uh, pork leaf lards, pig fats and tallows, all of them are fantastic. I love it. Well, because of the lack of cleansing and sudsing, and people seem to have to have this, we are gonna cut this recipe with a small amount of olive oil, um, just to give it a little more nourishing, fatty, yummy stuff that I can show you later at the end of our whole session what the recipe amounts to and what it kind of shows us as far as your, how many percentages and stuff. Okay, so the first step we're gonna do is you need to get on your computer and you need to get soap calculator. Whatever you're using, whatever you're doing, if you're starting from scratch, you need this soap calculator. You're gonna to need to know how much water and lye mix in with that fat. And if you're using an essential oil, do not use fake fragrance, folks. Don't use anything if you have fake fragrance. Um, you need to have this precise, folks. If you do it wrong, you'll have a bad experience and you won't like it. If you get a scale, not this scale, any old scale that does grams, you're gonna get away with easily doing this. Okay, so I picked my recipe. My recipe is pretty much, we've got uh, 1,400 grams of our sheep tallow and we've got 600 grams of the olive oil. Um, these are all gonna be baby bars is what we call them. We sell little uh, baby soap bars for little baby hands. Uh, it helps with psoriasis, skin disorders of every type. Um, and we use only the things that we know a little baby skin can handle. Anyway, so back to what we're doing. First thing I'm gonna do is we have to get our lye mixed in the water and your fat, the fat is gonna melt and you're fine, but that lye is gonna start, it's gonna be like, I think goes to 185 degrees, right off the get go. Um, and we're gonna do like a cold pour where we're gonna let it cool down just a little bit. So first thing we're gonna do, I've already pre-measured, I followed the recipe, which I highly suggest you guys to get a soap calculator free. Anybody can go to one. I'm using sodium hydroxide, uh, it's lye. This is all it is, comes in 2.2 pound bottles. I go through so many of these, it's crazy. Um, sodium hydroxide makes hard bars of soap. There's another one, uh, I think it's potassium or something. I can't remember the exact name. It makes soft soap, not the same. Get the sodium hydroxide. Who cares the brand, okay, folks? Whatever you can get your hands on. So my recipe called for, in particular, as far as my lie, 261 grams of the lye and as far as the water i've got 760 grams now when i mix the two don't be scared no one wants to make soap because they think they're going to set a bomb off they're not you're going to see it's not as exciting as you thought but it's easy to do now big tip if you did not watch my video and pay attention to what i'm saying right now you will have a bad experience Mix the lye in the water, never in reverse. You never, ever, 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 ever put that water to that lye unless you wanna see a bad experience. So we'll know right away from the comments section who didn't watch the video completely. So <laughs> I put my lye in plastic. I just wanna get rid of it a lot of the times at the container and rinse it out, reuse it. So this is my lye container. So all we're gonna do, I've got a wooden non-reactive spoon 
get this stuff from the dollar store, get it from the thrift store, wherever. Get your own supplies for soap making, throw them in a trash bag. So here we go, this is how exciting it gets. You're gonna see I'm sprinkling. I'm not dumping, we sprinkle. Sprinkle it in, a little at a time, not so fast, but fast enough that I'm not here for 30 minutes. Get it in there, once we get it in there, and another thing folks, you notice I got gloves on, okay? Lie burns, one granule, send you running. Just get the gloves, it's not a big deal. You don't need the face mask and goggles and everything you're gonna see online. You can do it if you want to, you don't need it. Okay, I have a window open. It's putting a reaction off right now. So what it's doing, and Ray, you can come in and take a peek. It's actually, I'm gonna move the spoon as I get, get the stirring so you can get closer and see the fumes coming out of it. And don't splash. Can you kind of scooch in a little? You think you can see even out of the top, see the smoke? I mean, I can see it. Yeah, I don't know if the video picks it up, folks. So, um, it's actually got like when something's too hot, steaming out of the top. So you'll notice when you start stirring it at first, it's gonna feel like it's stuck to the bottom of your container and scare you a little. It's fine, give it a minute. Stir it up gently. Um, all I'm trying to do is incorporate everything. I got my fumes gassing from the window so they're not coming into me, guys. Yes, you can do it outside. Do whatever you need to do. I'm doing it inside because it's pouring down rain right now outside. So I didn't get one of these originally and you do not need it. And I actually make soap without thermometers. Okay, but I just wanted to show you guys the heat level of this stuff. Um, let's get a little temp gauge. I think I'll put that on that. Let's see what we're at. I said 185. I'm not sure, but I'm totally. Well, as usual, my husband always says I <laughs> exaggerate and he might be wrong. It's only, okay, 165, folks. <laughs> okay, so it goes to 165. It will build more is why. So initially, right now, we're going to let it set. Now, a cold pour recipe, you want kind of both your fat and your lime mixture down to about like 125 degrees. But you don't have time for that. You can actually, I've, I've tested this method, you can just pour the hot lye right in cold fat and the hot lye will melt the fat and still make your soap. Now, if you're gonna add a lot of extras to it, sometimes you can come, come into some problems where if you're doing coloring and stuff um, because there is this thing called a gel period. But you can mix it hot just if you feel like trying it sometime. But this is called cold pour, and it's because we're actually letting them cool down is all. So we're gonna let the stuff cool down, and we're gonna come back in a couple minutes when we're closer to temp.